Hey there, welcome back and thanks for joining me. All my supplies and equipment are down in the description box. Um, if you don't see something that I'm using or want to see other things I use, check out the Amazon store. I try to put every single thing in there. And if you like this video, hit that subscribe button. If you want to be notified when videos come out, hit that notification bell and likes, comments, and questions are always welcomed. Okay, it's pumpkin time and I'm late doing this, but it's going to be fun. All right, first thing we got to do is get our size of cards. So typically um, a pad that I buy is like a 12 by whatever this is, a 12 by 9. So I cut it to where it's uh, a 6 by 9, and then I've got my card. So I'll have a 6 by 4.5. So that's that. Now, let me show you this tricky little thing. Um, this is what I make the grooves in my cards. Because you know the watercolor, especially the watercolor paper, when you go to fold it, it looks like it breaks or something. This is going to help a little bit with that. Um, I've already got mine marked for an A6 envelope, or a card rather. And so that's the one I go to all the time because it is half of this. So it's a four and a half uh, inch it comes with this little handy dandy thing you can make a crease right there i prefer these i like them better don't get a real small one because it can go through but to me it makes it a little more crisp a little more defined can you see and when you go to fold it it breaks it right there so that's what i do i do this before I paint because that tells me exactly where my line is. So this is neat. This is a EK tools or Ek, Ek tools or something. I've got it in there. I love it. Um, and on the back, it's got all kinds of angles if you want to do different angles. So there you go. Okay. These are just a little stylus. They are handy. I usually get they're in a pack of five. They've got two separate uh, ends on them, so you get really 10 of the little dot tools. It's really handy and a lot of stuff. Okay, so there's my cards. Now, this is the picture we're going to do. Now, I want to show you a really quick way to draw this, and you probably already know. And once I get mine drawn, I draw my template like this, and then I simply either get a light box, which I've given mine to my granddaughter, or... Hold it up to a window, and it shines through, and all you do is just kind of trace it. Now, I trace this a little on the dark side. It really doesn't matter because the, the paint's going to cover it up. Um, but that's what I do every single, so they're all drawn exactly like. So I can draw out 10 and then paint 10, you know, kind of whenever I want to. I'm using a pencil that is a graphite drawing pencil, and it's in 6H. So it gives you... Um, dark enough to see but there's some that are so light that you can barely detect it but again my colors are going on dark so i don't have to worry about that but check that out because that's a really nice easy pencil to draw and erase it erases really well and i get the white erasers you don't want pink <laughs> get the white so there is that so i've already got this drawn let me show you real quick how to draw how to draw a pumpkin. Okay, let's flip it on this side. Super, super easy. So, do an oval. And you can see how dark that is. It's not real dark. I may should do a different one. But anyway, draw an oval. Off centered, because there would be center. Go up about another halfway, so about three-fourths up. Make that where your stem comes out. Then start here. And I just do one oval like that. Now you want to go up a little bit and do that. Go up a little bit more. Now you can go as wide, tall, whatever you want to do on this. But this is generally how I do mine. Now I don't put too many layers, and that's probably one too many. I probably should have just done that and left all this out because um, I don't like to have too many 
ribbings or whatever you want to call it. Like this. So, then you go by all this, erase it. And there's your little pumpkin. Now again, tweak it how you want to. If you want a real tall one, do a tall one. If you want a short one, um, if you want um, a lot of the the ribs or the sections, do that. Um, but yeah, that is how you do it. Super easy. Now if you want to do one behind it, now because this is going to be a template, it's not going to be one that we actually see. Um, just do a circle like that. Go your three-fourths the way up. Do your circle like this, and then erase. And if you want this to go behind it, erase the new one. And I'm only erasing so you can see. Um, at this point, what I would do is just take a marker and mark on it and get it really thick like that. Now, I left this open because I'm going to put something here. If you don't want to, go ahead and close it up. I'm going to put a couple flowers and some leaves just to add a, maybe a different color to it. All right, so that is how all that's done. Super easy. And here's one I'm going to do a video on. Where is it at? Here, that one. And that's it. Now, the leaves, I just kind of indicated where I wanted them. You don't have to do that. Once you do this a couple times, you'll know where they go. But just for demonstration purposes, I went ahead and slightly draw them. I am not going to make them smooth like this. They're going to be rough like this. So that's another one we're going to do. Okay, let's get rolling. All right, I'm going to bring down a little bit because I was up a little higher. And I know watercolor. I always like to see really close up. And this will give you an idea what I'm doing here. Because this is going to go from a darker color to really watered down colors. We're going to start out with all the watered down colors first. In watercolor, you do the lightest first, then you do the darkest. Took me a long time to figure that one out, but that is how it's done. And I've got cloth. I like to use stuff I can reuse. So, yeah, I like to do that now. Um, for this first swipe, I'm just going to use, this is the number eight, I'm going to use it, ah, water, be right back. All right, <laughs> I knew I forgot something. Okay, and another thing, if you're going to make, say, ten of these, do this one color on all ten. It's going to keep you from constantly rinsing off your color, rinsing off your color, wasting your paint. And it's just going to save you paint. It's going to save you, you know, time cleaning your water. Um, so once I kind of get a big puddle of a light orange, I'm going to paint this one. I'll paint the next one and I'll, and I'll start laying them around me. Then when I go back to the first one again, it's dried. I'll do the blue. I do a light blue on all of them. It's going to save you more time. And it's just, it's just going to be easier. All right. Oh, <laughs> I got to show you something. All right. I got to bring this back up for this. Okay. Look, it's a t-shirt. That's of my art. Oh my gosh. Guys, you can go do this. Find you a print shop like a. Online, they have them online. Now I did this on Canva, and then I sent it to the print place, and they printed it. Is that not stinking cute or what? So yeah, I'm pretty tickled with myself. All right, I don't have one to look at. I do have my shirt. I don't have my shirt. I'll set my shirt up. Um, yeah, <laughs> they're all packed, uh, ready for a sale this weekend. Okay. Oh, it's the wrong picture. Never mind. Okay. This is where you decide you want the blue in front, you want the blue in the back. 
you know, it just, just up to you. So I'm going to do the blue one in the back. I'm going to do the orange up front. So I'm going to start off, get my brush wet. I'm going to come over here and re-wet. Now, I leave my palette, especially if I'm coloring a lot of the same stuff, I leave it. Because look, I didn't use any new paint. I just activated this. It's it's the coolest thing ever. Um, there's that. Now, all we're just going to do is get it, get it orange. That's all. There. And then I'm going to do the blue. I've got a couple blues, but whichever blue I end up with is fine. Now you do want to be careful not to like hit it. And I and we're going to go back over this with some dark, so it doesn't it doesn't have to go all the way to the edge. This blue is going to show up in the middle of each section, so it's not an important you know, get it to the edge type thing. Got a hint. So there is that. Let's get that dry. Now normally, like I say, I'm doing a number of these. I don't have to dry it. But if you do, just grab your blow dryer. I don't know what my blow dryer just threw out. Again, we're going to cover that up with that's not a biggie. Okay. Let me bring this back down. I don't know why I want to watch watercolor. I really, really, really want to just watch it up close. Oops, wrong end. <laughs> All right. Now, this is that color. I want to add a little bit more to it. So, we'll go over here and grab. A little more paint. I'll grab a little bit of yellow. I still want this to be a little orange. The accents, I don't mind being a little on the red side, but for right now, I still want it orange. So it's a little darker. Now, when we put it on here, we're going to go, whoa, that's a lot darker. It's not that really. Um, and it's going to be fine. This is a style I like to do where it's very um, piecey. It's like chunky. Oh, I know where I've got one. Anyway, for right now, look. So see how this color, so there's our light. It almost looks white, so light. The next color, the next color, it's chunky. It's, it's broken. It's not um, smooth. Okay, I did have one. I got to thinking, you just painted a couple of cards the other night. So, let's do this. Okay, here it is. So, see how they're not smooth at all. Now, that is my just my style. I like doing it this way. It is easy for me, and I kind of picked my style straight out of... <laughs> I could do this. Um, I'm not great at blending and having it just completely smooth. And that look is great. I love it. I wish I could do it. I struggle with it. This I can do easily. My head sees this. My mind understands this. So guess what became my style? I didn't pick it. I wasn't intending on this. But it did. It, it kind of picked me. So if you find you do something well, stick with it. Is that a fly? Jeez. Anyway, do it. Okay. Now, I'm going to, let's center on this just one right here. I'm going to leave the center of it, like the third center, light. So, I'm not going to go back over it. And I'm just going to kind of do this. Not even, see, just almost like you don't care. Just paint like you don't care. 
then I'm going to swipe up and do this so it's kind of connected here and here. You can also get your brush pretty dry and still do this type of effect. That's really pretty too. And as it goes, it is drying. It is, I'm getting some of the water out so it's not as stark as this one. It's more of a faded look. And can you see that? Well, let me do this rather than that. You kind of see? So that's what we're going after. Now I'm going to do the blue. And again, I'm just doing one. If you do more than one, and I would encourage you, go ahead and do two or three at a time. It's just so much easier. And you haven't done. So I'm going to go over here and grab my blue. And do the same thing. Do not get too wound up in this because part of the fun of this and the, the good the look of it is that it is moving. There's something going on with it. It's it's not perfect, it's not exact. I think that's what I'm liking. That's what I do well. Again, that's what I do well. All right, I might a little bit more color. Cause this is pretty dry. And go again. Oh, it is a fly. Jeez. Well, you know, I have the doors open, so I guess what am I expecting? That's one of our first 60 degree days, and oh my gosh, it's so nice. All right, there's that. And if you want to start getting some of this dark, kind of go back over it. Again, I flick it up so there's not a harsh line, but there are lines. If y'all do this, send me pictures. I love seeing y'all stuff. I, I don't like seeing it when it's better than mine, and there's plenty of that, but I do like seeing it. Yeah, I had one girl send me something. She did better on my own stuff, hers, hers than I did on mine. I'm like, jeez. Oh, but I was proud. It was It was pretty cool. All right, now we're going to do the blue. Now, at this point, I am going to start getting pretty dark. I am going to, because I've kind of got some layering going on. The next colors are going to be more um, accenting. It's going to be really, it's going to be really pulling these out. Because right now, these are still kind of flat looking. Um... I'm going to start getting pretty dark. Now this, I'm not going to water down. I mean, I've got water in it to get it flowy, but you see the color? It's a little darker. Let me see. And I'm going to get that dry because that underneath is still a little wet. Okay. What I do want, see that corner? I want that one, and I want this one full. I want it to have the dark on it. 
and that was sideways. See how it gets kind of, uh, see how I scoot it and it skips? That's ideal to do some stuff like this. You could really make your pumpkin have texture. Getting, getting it a little dry and working it. So try some of those. That's a fun thing. And you, you just keep working this, um, and, and tr going, keep going for that look. Cause there's not a sad, how many layers you do. You stop it when you like it. And I'm liking that. See, I like how you see those. They're very broken up. And now the blue, I'm going to get a little darker on the blue. That's a little harder to do. You know there's some shadow right there. So I just go ahead and still come here and come up a little bit with it. Oh, you're so annoying. Go away. All right, I went outside. It's okay. Oh, my goodness. I may have to stop and go kill me a fly. I wanted to leave that open, but I didn't. And we're not going to care. Okay, there is that. Now I'm going to get a little bit straighter. There's that color, and I kind of want to add... Um, there's some red. It's kind of a reddier red than the red-orange. Then I want to do some burgundy. I want to rich it up. There we go. I'm going to add a snicker of yellow. Oh, there we go. Just keep playing. Just keep playing till you like it. There you go. I like that. It's got a little bit of yellow, but not much. A little more yellow. I'm sorry. I cannot decide. That's what I want. Now this one I'm going to make it a little thinner. Because I really want it to indicate that this is the outer line of it. This is where you cover up your pencil. And none of those pencil lines ma matter at this point. And you can if you want to, like, I know I've already gone on the outside, but look how just leaving a little bit of a white line in there, and I say white, I mean just lighter, how that kind of indicates some stuff too. Now, I'm going to do one more, and it's going to be a darker red. 
when that dries for the final layer. Can you see that? Yeah. A little blue. Oh my goodness. And with this technique, you can do anything. I mean, I do my mushrooms like this. I do flowers. I just, I like this because I don't have to stay on that one section. I mean, I can, like I say, I'm bouncing around and um, I, I don't have to like get that petal just perfect. And then go to the next one. I can just do that color and then go and do the next one. And I really like it. It's it's makes PC. And the thing is, you know what you're looking at. The person looking at it understands the shadowing. It just looks different. So find what you do easily. That's what your brain likes. So if you can do it easily and you like it, that may be your style. And because this is the darkest, I'll let my, these lines right here be shorter. Because that's your really, your, your darkest shadowy areas. And a lot seeing this is going to go, well, the center should be the darker and the outlet. Do it however you want to. You know, just, you need to enjoy how you do this. I saw one the other day where the shadowing was opposite of mine. And I was like, huh, interesting. I like mine. So, and if you're new to watercolor, when you look at a picture that you're wanting to duplicate, start with your lighter tones and then work to your darker tones. When, when you do acrylic, you kind of do the opposite. You put down the dark petal and then do all your lighter colors. This one, you do your lightest and then build on top of it. It takes a minute, but the results are pretty cool. Once I figured it out, <laughs> and I actually, what really clued it in for me is I did some of the animation uh, classes. They're tiny, bitty strokes, tiny, but the theory she teaches you is good. And I'll tell you, I walked away from doing a number of hers going, I get it. I can look at pictures now and I can figure out how to do them. And she's got a free one to pair. And you're gonna be amazed at the texture that you come up with. I think one of my favorites other than um, well, I like that one, but I like, I did a basil leaf. And anytime I show people, the first thing they did was run their hands over it. Because it looked like it rippled off the paper. It was really cool.
Okay, oops, you know, I left a whole, whole section right there. Now right, we're just going to do that to it. Okay, stem. We probably should have incorporated that and been doing all the steps with it, but we didn't. I'll alternate it and the uh, leaves. Because normally, just do all the lightest areas, but did not do that. Okay, so this is a very light brown. And I'm going to do this, but then I'm going to have a weird turn to it. Now, my leaves, this is sap green. Love, 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 love sap green. Again, get it on the water downside. This is going to be your lightest. I have a leaf going up like this. I'm going to do one like this. Now I've got a lot of water on these, so I'm going to dabble this back up. Now I'm leaving, I'm trying to, let's say, I'm trying to do that, leave some white in there. That one I did not. Just leave some white like that. And then the yellow is pretty much straight yellow. And that's what I'm doing on it. All right, let's go back to the brown. The brown, I've got a little darker going into it here. Got some water. Let me get this water out. I'll scoot it over. A little bit darker brown. Again, I'm only covering two thirds of this again. So I'm going to just scribble, just little. Now, let me get these dry. Okay, so with this green, I'm just going to do one layer of really dark. So I've just got a really light, a really dark. It's the only really room I have for because this is a thin area to work with. Um, but on my stems, I'm going to have about three to four colors. So I'm going to come over here and really activate. I've got some black in this one, and it's quite a bit darker. And I'm going to do about a third of it now. So I can see some of my lightest, some of my medium. And just a little bit of it. On the green. I'm going to go in pretty dark. I want this to be really, really dark. And I'm just going to do the outside. Like that. And it doesn't have to be exact. It can be haphazard because... <laughs> You don't you don't go out and look on anything and see a completely flat leaf facing you. There. See how that just kind of jumps out at you. And let's see. I'm going to do some black. And this just pops it out ever so slightly. I'm 
All right, now that the yellow is dry, I'm gonna go in here with some uh, more of a burgundy color. And I'm just gonna dab, not a circle, just something. You see how much paint, if I was doing five or six of those, I probably could have done all of them with that one bit, but instead, I'm rinsing. So again, the more you do. All right, here is this part. I'm gonna get, now this is a number six I'm using. I'm gonna get my really dark brown, holding the brush not tight at all. I want it loose. I'm going to just start some swirlies. Don't, don't, don't overthink it. Don't go back and fix it. That's all, that's all I'm going to do. Because I'm going to go in with a pen, kind of redo a little bit of it. It's going to give it a different look. Um, I start off with a little bit of my brown again. I'm going to water it down pretty good. And just put you some shadows. Now, depending on what color you want to do, I like splatting in my warm tone color. I don't know why. Sometimes I'll do it in like a darker color and it's like, hmm, it kind of just looks like you splash paint, you know, black or something on it. So I'm going to come over here and get some of my blue. Get it pretty watered down move this guy oh no, I don't said I didn't want blue jeez let me do this I just, the one thing I said I would didn't like is the one thing I went to do mm -mm -mm. all right now I don't know why I enjoy splats so much I do it in alcohol ink too I just like them I don't know. It adds, there's a dimension it adds to it, I guess. Okay, I'm going to get that dry. Okay. Here is where it gets fun and interesting and just does different things. Okay, so look at those two. This one has pen work. This one does not. Both are completely acceptable. Both of them are completely likable. <laughs> and whoever you gave this card to is going to go, oh, that is pretty. There's just a difference about it. And it's up to you, the creator, to decide what you want to do. If you like this, do it. Do exactly that. I like pen work because... Dumb fly. I like pen work because it creates another dimension. And I think the more layers I get in a painting or a picture or a card creates more interest. It gives your viewer more to look at and they get to participate a little bit in your painting. And what I mean by that is if you have a flower and then you go outside the flower and do the pen work. I don't know if I have anything that I can show you immediately, but, well, I mean, let's look at that. So, the pen is not exactly on the edge of any of the greenery. So, what that does is create, essentially, two leaves to look at. There's the colored one, there's the outlined one. And I think it just creates something a little more interesting, especially, look up here. There's my watercolor, and there's my pen. Okay, he's <laughs> wearing me out. So, let's go. Let's do this. Now, so you're not exact. Back up. Back up and get about halfway. Gives you more freedom. You do this, you can see how your circle goes. You do this, you can see how. So, there's something about backing off of it that gives you a little more freedom to play with. All right. I'm not going to sit here and draw smooth all the way around. I'm going to sketch. 
because the style of this painting calls for it because of how it's done. Now, if it was completely smooth, yeah, maybe. And we'll go a little darker on this upper side. Try to stay with the angles you've painted, so you don't want to go really against them. If you want, you can outline it a little bit more, make them darker. Like that. And these pens are Arteza. What's it say? I can't read the glare. Inconic. But when I darken this right here, that gives more of an illusion. There's a shadow. It gives the that it's dipping down. This also gives that illusion that that's a shadow. It's dipping. It's it's gone in. Because you don't want your card flat. Look at the difference. Isn't that crazy? Mm-hmm. Now, the stem. Look at that. How did I miss that? Hold on. I got to fix it. Now, I'm going to go ahead and just do dark in with it and just kind of play with it and put something there. There. That's all. That's all. I'll come back and do that in a minute. So, with this, I wanted a little weirdness to it. Now, I'm going to do this. See how it doesn't match? It's quite all right. So, but look. Look at how <laughs> cute. All right. I'm going to go back and do some more. And I did round this out. Normally, I just leave it jagged, but, eh, you know, it's all right. And sometimes, instead of just doing the strokes like this, you may just want to scribble short, long, short, long, and let it have little loops or something in it. I mean, just, just play and see what you come up with, because you're going to discover something that you're like, oh my gosh, I really like that. And it's going to be really cool. I got something sticky on my finger. There we go. All right, for the leaves, this is where you kind of give your leaves their shape. You kind of tell that, oh, they're pumpkin leaves. See, look at these, look at those. 
all because the pen work said something a little different. You're like, oh, okay. There. One last thing. And there you go. So, I hope you go try this. Go try this style. See if you like it. But, you know, I guarantee you're going to find your own. You're going to find something you love doing and that you're naturally good at. So, happy pumpkin season. And y'all go have fun. <laughs>